Hey guys, welcome. Today we're going to be making line projects. Um, I'm super excited because I love learning about line and I love painting and using my crayons. So um, if you don't have paint, that's okay. Um, you can skip that step. But what I would suggest is if you do, these are my favorite type. Um, you can get them for about a dollar at Walmart, sometimes less. Um, these I really, really like. They're the Crayola washable watercolors. Um, they come in, a, in this little container and they have eight colors. And it comes with a little paintbrush. And this is the paintbrush that it comes with. This paintbrush is great. Um, if you feel like it's taking you too long, I like to use a bigger brush. So I like to use a bigger brush, the, like a little softer. Now, I just wanted to say, I really love these brushes. They, they, you can get them in a pack for like a dollar or two. They're great. I love them for using acrylic paint, which is like a thicker paint or a temper paint. But for watercolors, they're really too hard. And then they kind of make little holes inside these, these ovals. They make little holes and it pokes it and then doesn't really get my paint smearing nicely. It just kind of goes and it doesn't cooperate with me. It's hard to use. So I would suggest using a soft brush when you're using watercolor. Something, see how soft that is when it when I use my finger? You can see how soft it is. You can see that this one's real soft too. The other ones are like pokey, like straws, and they're kind of hard. So you want it to be nice and soft and bendy, and it'll work better for you. So make sure if you are going to be doing something using some paint like this, that you use something that's nice and soft so that you move that water around very gently. Makes it a lot easier, okay? All right, so I also love Crayola because they, um, they work awesome, but I'm also gonna, I'm gonna mix and match and show you if you have a little something else. I found these for uh, a whole set for like a dollar, um, at Target in that little dollar section. These are called oil pastels. These also work too, really great. So I'm gonna mix and match for you guys so you can see how they're the same and different and how maybe, um, I'm gonna compare and contrast for you, see how they're the same and different, see maybe which one works better. And you could use either type, okay? So those are the materials we need. And the other thing I need is a piece of paper and then you need, if you're using paint, you need a little cup. I just use, this has been used with, it, that's paint. It's dirty from paint. But I use this like plastic cup. That's something that you're gonna throw away, not something that you're gonna drink out of later. So like a paper or plastic cup um, and just a paper towel or something to clean my brush with when I'm painting and make sure I have some space to do that that I'm not too crowded. Okay, so I have all my things. I have white paper. You can use construction paper or copy paper. Usually if it's a little thicker paper that works better when you have paint, but um, you can use any type, type of paper. Using thin paper, sometimes it goes through a little bit, so it's easier to use a little bit thick paper if you have it. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to do lines and you can make it into a pattern. We're, the first thing we're going to do is just doing different lines. You only have to do one of these. So just decide which one you want to do, what you, how you want to do it. So the first thing I do is I'm going to make a straight line. And I picked my purple crayon. And then the next one, I'm going to use the purple oil pastel. And I'm going to make a wavy line. See, that's wavy, like wavy hair, or waves in the ocean. Um, you, you can use any colors you want. This is just an example. Now I'm gonna take my red crayon and I'm gonna do a zigzag line. Zigzag. Zigzag always reminds me, it sounds like zipper, because it has that Z. I always think of a zipper. I don't, I don't think zippers really look like that too much, but it just reminds me of the word zipper. Okay, then I'm gonna do a dashed line. I'm gonna use my oil pastel. Dashed line is like, sometimes you see in paper when you're writing with your handwriting, has this little dashed line in the middle. 
Then I'm going to try, let me see. We, sometimes this can be called a broken line. Yeah. I'm going to use a dotted line. So I'm going to make circles. It's still a line because it's a line of just dots. So I'm using my green crayon to make dots all the way across and it's a line. Okay. Now I'm going to use my green oil pastel. What other kind of types of lines can we do? How about this spiral line, which is kind of like curly. You can call it a curly line or a spiral line. Let's do like a type of line. All right. And then I'm going to get a little fancy down here. See this one is straight. I'm going to do an angled line. Well, this is a diagonal line. Woo. It's going down that way. See, that's a diagonal line. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to get my oil pastel and I'm going to make lots of lines going this way. See how this line, my first line was horizontal. It's going side to side. These lines are all going vertical up and down. And I'm going to make them all the way inside of this shape. I created almost like a triangle by making that diagonal line. All right, so I made a whole bunch of different types of lines. Now, maybe I'll make a, a few curved lines, okay? So I'm gonna move my paper and I'm gonna make a curved line. So it's just kind of like a, almost like a little rainbow arc. But I'm gonna make a few of these. And this is the orange that I'm using. Colors look a little bit different on, on this. Okay, so I've done my whole paper. Now this is the fun part. Okay, so I'm going to, I made all my different types of lines. I'm gonna dip my brush into water. Then I'm going to take some paint and I'm going to Oh, for, then I'm going to take some paint, make sure I have plenty of water. I might have to get water two or three times. And I have paint on my brush and I'm going to go across here and just paint. And you can see that my color will show through. Now it looks a little weird here because my paper is wet. But sometimes when you paint on top of things, you can't see the crayon, but now you can because, ooh, that was really wet. Um, because the uh, paper, you can see it through. Now, this is what I was talking about, how it gets really thin, but that's okay. I can try and use a little less water but it'll dry better. Trust me, it'll dry a lot better than that. So next, I'm gonna try changing my colors. I was using yellow right now, so I don't wanna mix yellow on my palette with any other color because it might look muddy. It might be some weird color that um, doesn't, like a, it might look like green or orange or something like that. And I don't, I mean, those aren't weird, but I don't want those colors. I already have those colors on my palette. This is called the painting palette. So I don't want this palette. See how it's yellow? I don't want to mix it with the neighbor colors because I already have orange and green. I don't need to make more colors. Now, sometimes it's okay to mix colors, but right now I'm trying to keep these, it'll kind of, every time I use this color, it'll look kind of be, I won't be able to get yellow again. And sometimes I want to get yellow again because I might need it for a sun or something in the future. And if I mix orange with it, then it'll end up looking too much like orange and it won't look like yellow anymore. You know what I mean? Okay, so I'm getting some, I cleaned my brush to change colors. And now I'm doing orange.
So after we do this, we're going to try a different idea of what we can do with our lines. And then we'll come back to this and see when it dries that it looks a little bit better. Actually, a lot better. See how I'm getting pretty much water almost every other time that I get um, paint because otherwise it comes out too sticky and it takes too long to dry and it also doesn't spread very far. You see I was using this very small brush so now I'm going to switch to a bigger brush so it can go a little faster. So I've used yellow, I've used orange, now I'm using green. Oh this brush is working a lot better. Oh, 10 times better because it's bigger. So see how my cool, my colors come through. It looks so neat to be able to see if I paint over this stuff, it's okay because I can see I'm not covering anything. I just see the colors that I already made underneath. They show through, which I really like being able to see that. It worked really well. Let's see, like, let's experiment. Did my oil pastels look better when I colored over them or did I, did my crayons look better? Hmm. Well, this is an oil pastel, this one, and this is a crayon. They both look really good. I think the oil pastels are just brighter. Um, and if I had thicker paper, it would be even better. But we'll keep going. Okay, so. I've done yellow, I've done orange, I've done green. I think I'm going to do, hmm, maybe I'll use red here. Look at that. It just like peels away. I'm gonna use red here and I'm going to use blue on the last one. You know why it does this? This is so cool because I don't know if you heard, ever heard this expression. Look how cool it peels away when I color over it. Look at this. Look at that, it's so cool. Look, it goes away, it just pulls away from that blue color. I love it. So fun to see it do that. So have you ever heard someone say oil and water don't mix? I don't know if you've ever heard that, but if you have like vegetable oil or olive oil, and then you add water, it, um, it'll separate. The oil will flow on top of the water or sink on, I'm sorry, I think it sinks, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's separate from the water. They separate and they, you can see two different layers in the container that you have them in. Um, I'm gonna go to blue now, but I'm actually gonna do blue and then I'm gonna do purple and alternate. Alternating means switching between two different things. And so it's okay if I go over my line a little bit, that's fine. Because it pulls away, see, it's so cool. It's a nice clean line. Anyway, so oil and water don't mix, they separate because of the, the oil and the water are two different, um, two different things, so they separate, okay? Sometimes things mix together. Like if you have salt and water, Sometimes they can mix and the salt will dissolve in water or sugar and water, but oil and water, they just don't stay together. They just always separate naturally. So same thing with wax and water and the wax in the crayons or the oil pastel, even says oil pastel, see, um, they separate. So the wax always separates from the water. And then also, the and I'm going to go to purple by the way. See, okay, so the that's what the wax does. But if you put salt, if I were to put salt on my picture, you would see that the water it would make like a speckly pattern. That's actually kind of a fun project putting salt or sugar on your paper um, and doing watercolors. You do it when the watercolor is really wet. So when the watercolor is wet, you sprinkle it and then it makes kind of a cool pattern. But um, yeah, because it, it um, doesn't mix with it. But it kind of dissolves, the, the salt kind of dissolves in different ways than the, the wax from the crayons. So if you ever had um, 
like a drink mix, like um, Nestle Quick or something, and they mix the powder into the water or the milk. If it's, if it's Kool-Aid, it goes into the water. If it's milk, um, you can mix Nestle Quick or something like that. That dissolves. It becomes one thing. It doesn't separate into two different things. I'm going to set this aside to dry. And while it's drying, I'm going to do another example. Okay, so what was I going to say about that? Um, so yeah, they'll, you can get a drink mix and it will become one thing. But if you, um, if you get oil or wax, it will separate into, um, I'm sorry, the, the drink mix becomes one thing, but the oil and wax or oil and oil and water or wax and water separate into two separate things. So that's neat. So that's why this works the way it does. All right, so I'm gonna give you another, while I'm talking, I'm gonna give you another example. I'm gonna draw something with different kinds of lines. So right now I'm just gonna do a, a shape. This is gonna be my vase. Actually, I'm going to do it, turn it around. And then I'm going to do different types of lines coming out of it, which would be my, let's just say they're plants. Okay. I'm just focusing this a little bit more. All right. So that was the wax, the oil pesto. So I'm going to do straight lines coming out, curve lines. I'm going to do curly lines. I'm going to do zigzag lines. I'm going to do um, wavy lines. Okay, and I'm going to do more curved lines here. Some of them are short lines, some of them are long lines, some of them are medium, different kinds of lines here. Um, so it kind of looks like a plant. Then I'm gonna do, ah, whoopsie. <laughs> um, like a broken line here and maybe a dotted line here. You can do like a little pattern. You can decorate it however you want. I think this doesn't look dark enough, so I'm going to come in with a dark purple and trace my shape. Okay. Now, if I if you want to do like a little curly curly cue thing here, make me pretend flowers or something. That's fine. You don't have to. I'm going to do it though. Okay. So now. While um, my other painting is drawing, I'm drying, I'm going to take my brush and start painting over this one so you can see another way to do this assignment. So I'm going to color in my vase blue. Oops, you can't see it. See how it's really cool that you can see it pulls away. Isn't that neat? You can see it like come through my pattern that I made comes through. So I don't have to worry about painting in little lines. It just comes through. It's really neat, huh? Okay. And then I'm going to paint my background here. I'm going to choose a green. And I'm just going to paint over everything. So I don't know if I told you, this is called wax resist or crayon resist because it resists or it fights the other, the paint, the water color paint. So you can see that I'm painting here and it's pulling away. So it looks like my plants are coming out of the vase. And now I'm going to go to the top of them is going to be yellow because sometimes when you see new growth in plants, they, they're a little yellowy. Remember, I'm cleaning my brush between every color. 
I don't want it to be all mixed up. If I want yellow, I want to be able to go for yellow. Okay, now I'm going to use purple for my little spirally roses, but I'm going to mix, I'm going to do every, well, like some of them be purple and some of them not be purple. I'm going to go even around them a little bit. I'm going to do some red because I really like red. These look kind of like red roses. I'm going to use orange for these two. So let's see, what color have I not used? I've used red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I've used them all. So I can pretty much use whatever color I want now. I'm going to use black on the bottom so it looks like a, like a shadow down here. It doesn't really show up that well, but it's okay. I mean, it shows up, but it doesn't really look like black. It looks like brown, but it's okay. Anyway, so this is going to be my table. And if you don't have the, these colors, it's, I mean, the paints, it's okay. You can skip this step. You can just have the lines on there and that's fine. All right, so I finished my table. I'm gonna go use brown in this middle section here. I'm gonna clean my brush and add brown. So now this part coming up from my table is gonna around you. Maybe you notice that everything's really made up of different kinds of lines. Well, not everything, but a lot of things. I'm almost done here, and then I'm going to pick a different color. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to blue because I don't have that much blue. Okay, so I'm going to turn it upside down. And blue. Just kind of painting around my flowers doesn't have to be perfect. Or you could leave it plain white. You don't have to color the whole paper. That's up to you. I'm just doing that because I want to. Like I said, there's no right or wrong when you're making art. It's all about having fun and expressing how you feel or your ideas. And if it doesn't turn out, the way you want it to. Is that okay? Yeah. There's all kinds of happy accidents. That's what Bob Ross used to say. He's a famous painter. He used to have a TV show when I was little, even before I was little. And my art teacher used to say that too. Her name was Mrs. Byers and she, I'm from Texas and she was a really nice lady. Okay. So now I have that and I noticed that my roses um, look a little bit like I should color over them because they got a little bit too much than I wanted. So I can go back over. That's no problem. I'm going to make it a little bit darker because I can see my purple a little bit more, my red a little bit more. I'm going to make my circles a little darker. 
All right, so I'm cleaning my brush between every color so I don't mix them. Like I said, it's okay that they mix a little, but sometimes when I want purple, I want it to look like purple, not orange. So um, if I want orange, I want it to look like orange. All right. Now, that's done. I'm going to turn it around so you can see that this is, this is done. So that's the top. And that's the bottom. Now let's go back to our other design, our other assignment. Look how much better it looks now that it's dry. Still a little bit wet, still a little thin. But you can see my colors, you can see my lines. Looks pretty cool. And the other one's gonna look even better when it dries. So if you're worried about how it looks now, like you see how this is, these little lighter patches are drier and these darker patches are wetter and it's gonna look a little like smoother and nicer when it's all the same. See how these are, this is a little darker, it's a little lighter, it's gonna look even prettier when it's all one thing, you know? So there's my assignment. I hope you enjoy and you have fun and that you learned something new. Okay, bye.